So my wife told me yesterday that her car kind of cranks slow in the morning. I said, ah, I'll check the cables. It might be dirty or whatever. And then I realized the battery is about three and a half years old. And in Texas, with this hundred some degree heat, I figured it was going to be bad. I put it on at first. I saw 12, I had 12.4 volts. I said, uh, that's pretty good. But then once I ran the test with the top down, it said it has 29% battery health left. 388 cold cranking amps out of 700. Yeah, uh, it's definitely a bad battery. So we're gonna go ahead and get her a new battery and replace it. And I'm gonna show uh, how I do it with my uh, memory saver because she gets 31 miles a gallon with this bad boy, going back and forth to work. And we're gonna keep her memory locked in so it doesn't have to relearn everything. So I'll show you that shortly. Okay, what do I use to save my memory? Well, this is a Schumacher. Uh, goes in your OBD2 port. What this does is, if you see this one to the side, that's pin 16, that's always hot on your uh, OBD port. You can always find a hot lead there. And then four and five, these are your grounds. One's your computer ground, and the other one is your ground for your chassis to your, you know, grounds pretty much everything. So when you plug this in your OBD2 port up underneath the dash, then you, I plug it into this, which is a little converter. I can plug it into my electrical outlet and it'll maintain the voltage on there when I disconnect the battery so that I don't have to uh, uh, you know, worry about her memory. Like I say, she gets good gas mileage. So we'll go ahead and hook this up. I can't do it one-handed and film it. So I'm gonna go ahead and plug this in on the dash and then I'll get it going and show you. Okay, so we got that plugged into the outlet. You got the Schumacher plugged in, you got that plugged in. You see it's got the light on it going. And we're going to go ahead and disconnect the battery while well, that's saving everything. And we'll go ahead now and just disconnect the battery. And once we do that, you pretty much don't have to worry about nothing having to be reset. Might be saying, oh, that's no big deal. Or there's, there's other ways to do it, but I find this way is the easiest for me. That's why I <clears throat> spent the $50 for that because it just makes more sense to me to have, uh, have that. So. Anyway, I can't do this one-handed, so I'm gonna go ahead and uh, cut off now, but that's how I do it, that's how I memory save, that's how I uh, put the battery in and out without uh, changing, and I'll show you the tests after I'm done. All right, we're back, got the battery installed, got an auto zone, just quick, it's easy over here to get. I got a 750 amp cranking amp one, and yeah, this shows that it has 839, which is, there's a reason for that. Uh, and it, it has to do with the way the battery is made and how it holds a static charge and whatnot. Anyway, uh, I'm not a battery expert, but there's more on that if you want to look it up. But anyway, it's got 100% uh, health, 82% um, charge, and uh, it looks like it's good to go for it. She's got a brand new battery in there, 100% health, 839 cranking amps. And uh, after she drives a little bit, I'm sure that uh, charge rate will be a lot better than 82%. So, all right. Now that's the end of my video. Hope uh, somebody got something out of it.